Shape A can be transformed to shape B by a reflection in the x-axis followed by a translation vector CD. Find the value of C and the value of D. Okay, so it says shape A can be transformed to shape B by a reflection in the x-axis followed by a translation. Okay, so we firstly need to actually perform this reflection. So I'm going to perform a reflection. So if we do this, um, you, there, there's several methods you can use to reflect a shape. Um, but for the purposes of, of this video, I'm going to show you by counting squares. So we are reflecting, reflecting firstly in the x-axis, which we need to identify as this one here. This is the x-axis. So I'm basically flipping this triangle over the x-axis. You're flipping this triangle over the x-axis and we're going to do that by counting squares. So this vertex here is two squares from the line of reflection, i.e. the x-axis. So we need to go another two squares, that's one and two, uh, on the other side of the x-axis. So that's that one. This vertex here is also two squares from the x-axis, the line of reflection. I'm going to go two squares the other side, and that vertex is going to go to there. This vertex here, up here, is, let's count them, one, two, three, four, five squares to the line of reflection, the x-axis. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five five on the other side hopefully you can see let's do that nice and neatly with a ruler so always use a pencil and a ruler for this task because if you do it in pen you've only got the one exam paper if you do it in pen you do it wrong oops you can't rub it out Okay, and that is a reflection of A in the x-axis. If you want to, you can also use tracing paper to do a reflection. So if you get your piece of tracing paper, trace over your shape and then put your ruler along the x-axis and over the tracing paper and then fold the tracing paper over the then fold the paper over to, to give this, to, to give this uh, reflection here. So we've performed that reflection, we've done that bit, followed by a translation. Now a translation is literally picking up and moving. So we're asking by how much has this been picked up and moved? So pick one vertex, I'm going to pick this one, and we say how much has that been moved to then be put down here? And it will be the same for whichever vertex you pick. So if I had to pick this vertex, it would be the same amount that I've moved it to get to there. If I pick this vertex, it would be the same amount if I uh, picked it up and moved it to there. So let's just, um, for the purposes of this video, let's just pick the green one. So the green one has moved one, two, three, four, five, six left. Six left. And how many down? One down. Okay, one down. Now we need to put this into a column vector. Now in a column vector, uh, the number on top indicates whether you're moving left or right. Um, left or right and the bottom one indicates whether you're moving up or down okay and basically if you're moving to the right it's a positive and if you're moving up it's a positive I left myself enough room to put these things here all right positive and if you're moving left I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this a bit better I'm gonna do this a bit bigger So, column vector. In a column vector, you've got two values. OK, 
okay? Your top one is left, bottom one is up or down. The value is positive if you're going to the right or up. The value is negative if you are going to the left or down. So coming back to this here, I'm going six left which means it must be minus six because as I'd said here if you're going left it's a minus and one down and look I'm going down here so again it must be minus one so c is minus six and d is minus one